So I'm here to talk about uh, how Fusion Compiler technology has helped uh, us on our uh, high-performance CPU core design, uh, uh, you know, using some of the advanced techniques that are there in Fusion Compiler. And I'll go through some details uh, in my presentation here. So uh, I'll start off with a quick introduction to ARM. Uh, I guess that's not needed, but uh, you know, just a few slides. Um, I have a marketing team that sent me a couple of slides to share. And then we'll go into some of the unique challenges that uh, that that are uh, you know that are there for uh, ARM for our group in uh, in ARM and may not apply uh, to a lot of customers who actually do tape out, but people like us who are in the business of producing RTL uh, IP and shipping it out to customers like you, uh, it's very uh, important. And we'll see how Fusion Compiler ha helps address those challenges and then uh, uh, summarize at the end. All right, so here's the first marketing slide. Uh, we are a, a global uh, CPU uh, uh, company, and the uh, majority of the uh, you know, population out there has used uh, or is using ARM technology in one way or form or the other. Um, we uh, shipped 23 billion Cortex uh, processors uh, in 2018. We hit that milestone, so, um, and our uh, Cortex-A uh, cores are uh, have a big market share in a lot of different areas. A uh, lot of them are uh, listed here. And as, as, as I speak, uh, we are uh, going into newer and newer market areas also. All right, so to, uh, to design a complex uh, SOC or a complex system, you need a lot of different, uh, you need to work in a lot of different areas, right? Uh, and uh, therefore, we work uh, with Synopsys in a bunch of different different areas. My presentation today is uh, mainly in the uh, uh, in the optimization space. Uh, all right. Uh, so let's look at the some of the challenges that we face uh, in 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 ARM uh, on RTL design. So I'm from the physical design team. Uh, my title is uh, you know physical design guy, but but the end product. Uh, coming out of ARM is m most most of the time not uh, silicon, right? It's basically an RTL uh, uh, that we ship out. So we are basically uh, part of the RTL team, and our primary job is to produce or to uh, give feedback to the RTL team on on the RTL and how it will uh, work in physical design space. So that's our primary job. So uh, some of these challenges are unique to companies uh, like ARM, which, uh, which produces an RTL um, IP and ships it out. So let's look at some of the challenges. Number one challenge, that RTL feedback loop has to be cut uh, short, right? So the time from uh, of hitting the button on the RTL to getting a good quality feedback, again, good quality is the keyword, is very important. So uh, because that, uh, if we can cut that time down, and if the feedback is correlated nicely with the uh, with the with the final you know PPA, and if we can get that early, that helps us a lot. So uh, that's our uh, number one uh, one uh, challenge here. Second challenge is ARM designs. Uh, basically, we go after a high IPC. That means that in, in our uh, uh, in our uh, pipeline stages. They they may not be all balanced very nicely. They may not have ten uh, you know stages or fifteen stages or twenty stages you know uh, in, in in all the pipeline stages. So we need architecturally we need useful SKU to come in uh, into our design and help our critical paths. Now useful SKU is not always good. I'll talk uh, more about that later. But we need useful SKU very early on into the picture. So we don't want to wait all the way after CTS. Uh, for the for to get a picture of where the useful skew is going and uh, which uh, uh, and how is it helping the design or uh, you know hurting the design right so that 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 picture has to come 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 to us very early so let's look at uh, fusion compile how does it help us with these two uh, challenges all right so uh, what is a traditional flow a traditional flow is you read in the RTL into a, into an engine it will elaborate the design, it will map the design, uh, then it goes into the placement uh, stage where you know, it will place the design uh, using some global route technology. And then it, uh, that, uh, that uh, guy go, uh, the design goes into uh, the uh, CTS engine. And the CTS engine will now look at you know, the different uh, pipeline stages and say, okay, you know, I, I need to do this or that 
on 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 these uh, you know these pipeline stages, right? So that's your traditional design, and that's what uh, the traditional flow, and that's the flow that uh, we started off uh, with. So that's our uh, you know flow that I, I have uh, listed here, um, which which takes about two days on a design of this size. So this is a typical uh, a CPU coming out of ARM Austin. We we are uh, producing the high-end CPUs. So our designs, uh, this is an, just an example. Uh, the CPU that, uh, that I pulled this data from is 3 million plus instances. It's a very aggressive uh, 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 frequency target on that. And it has multiple setup and hold corners, right? So it's a typical uh, design uh, that, that we build. And um, if I wait for, if I wait for uh, the feedback uh, uh, that has uh, uh, you know the design placed uh, with some good global uh, uh, routing and CTS, some idea of CTS. It takes about two days because I need to wait for you know the synthesis and placement and CTS and so on. With Fusion Compiler, since it actually uh, uh, it's a it's a unified model and the global route technology we uh, see is very nicely correlated with the backend and it has the CCD in. Uh, uh, or some kind of early clock tree estimation in, uh, we cut that uh, uh, that uh, uh, feedback time by half, which is a big deal for us. So that means that on a design that big, I can do three or four iterations in a week, going back to the RTL team, getting some fixes back, starting another iteration, getting fixes back, and starting another fix. Whereas in the traditional flow, I could only do maybe one or two. Uh, a side benefit that, that we see is that Fusion Compiler uh, has better memory footprint also, which means that I can throw more machines uh, at, at, my, uh, you know, at, at the, at the pro problem, and uh, I can get uh, uh, you know, e e even faster, or I can have more jobs running right on my cluster. All right, uh, so um, here are some of the metrics. Uh, we, we get, okay, that, that's good. We get the feedback early, but what are some of the metrics that we pull out? So we pull out a lot of data for our RTL uh, designers, and we, it, we, uh, in, within the physical uh, design space, we also look at all, all, you know, these, uh, these, these metrics quite a bit. So here are some of them listed. These are not all by any, you know, any way, so these are just a few that I pulled out. So we look at the cell density uh, um, uh, 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 map here, the detail placement map, uh, WNS map is very critical on our design. This basically tells you know where the tool is spending most of the time, where our critical paths are, and uh, the most important one out of Fusion Compiler is the early clock tree uh, map, which basically sh shows uh, you know how the clock clock tree is built, and you know uh, we can get a lot of heuristics back from 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 uh, from this view. All right, so. Um, Getting the feedback early is good, but it has to be good feedback also, right? So that, that's the key. So, uh, so let's look at a traditional flow. In a traditional flow we, we, uh, that, that I described earlier, we have to do a lot of margining upfront. And this margining is for various reasons, right? I mean, our uh, global route to detail route, uh, you know, mismatch. Uh, then, then SI comes in way later. Then clock, uh, you know, global skew comes in, you know, way later and so on. So in a traditional flow, what we do is we have to have a very high uh, uh, a margin upfront to account for all these uh, different uh, things that I just described. And then as, as we go from synthesis to uh, pl uh, placement to CTS to route, we taper it off. That's a traditional flow that, or at least that's the flow that we have used within ARM. With, with, with the phys, uh, f Fusion Compiler, uh, what, what it does is that uh, since the C CTS is built in and it has nice engines which are nicely correlated front to back, we don't need to do very aggressive margining. That's a big thing that we saw with Fusion Compiler. Now, uh, any, any EDA uh, tools out there, if you put a lot of margining up front during, uh, during synthesis, the design will be bloated. Right, design is super bloated. At the end, uh, yes, you can recover some of that area, some of that power, but it it will not. Uh, later stages cannot recover too much. Design is solidified as we go through the design stages. Since we don't have very aggressive margining upfront, uh, the uh, 
the design comes comes back with better area and better power. Now this this may not look very uh, very good, 1.6 percent area and 1% uh, power, but in the space that we are working, these are big big deal for us. Right now, one thing that you can see, they, they, uh, we we get to the final PPA goal in both traditional flow and fusion compiler flow, but fusion compiler flow gives us better uh, power and area. All right, let's move to the uh, point number two. Let's talk about useful skew. Useful skew is uh, good and bad, right? It is good uh, uh, or if the, it, is, it is required and it is only on the critical paths. It is bad if you just throw in the useful skew because what will it do? It will increase the clock power. It will make hole closure much difficult, cross corner variation. So, so uh, what we need to figure out uh, very early on is where the useful skew is going, which parts of the design is getting the useful skew, and how is it helping the design or hurting the design. So that view, getting that view early is very important. So, here's, uh, you know, so we, we can, we can prepone and postpone uh, you know, clock syncs, and that's what Fus Fusion Compiler now does early on during the synthesis stage. And from, from here, what we can do is we can get a lot of uh, good data that we can extract out. So I'm proud to say that this multi-stage uh, SKU report is something that we actually built internally uh, through you know, a lot of Perl scripting and stuff, you know, dumping the timing and all. And we have worked with uh, Synopsys, so thank you Synopsys for putting this in, uh, because this is very important. So this shows a, like a, a pipe stage uh, where we can, we can see you know, what, what is the latency on different things, what is the SKU, uh, and especially here, what are the levels? So now based on this, we can figure out whether that useful skew going in, for example, stage minus one is really needed or not, right? And we can go back to our uh, uh, RTL designers, say, okay, you know, can, you, can we move the logic around? Uh, can, we, can we do something about it? Or, or areas where probably the useful skew is not going in, we can, we can actually figure out why it's not going in. Right, so this is very important. And as we go deeper into the, in, into the flow, there are other very useful metrics that come out. For example, CRPR. That's very useful to us also, because that can, uh, uh, that can actually sh uh, uh, tell us the shape of the clock train, how it, it will help. You know, the common path should be much deeper, so that, that comes into play as well. All right. So. Um, this is a busy chart, um, and what uh, I'm trying to show you here is here is my zero line, right? So, in a in a in an ideal uh, in or in a traditional flow, the clocks are ideal. So everything, you know, we are basically right here, right? All of our clock syncs are here. There's no pre-poning, post-poning going on. With with Fusion Compiler, now this is extracted out of Fusion Compiler dash FE, which is the front end, right? Where the clock uh, CCD has gone in and done some pre-poning and post-poning. We can see there's more pre uh, more post-poning versus pre-poning, which make, make, makes sense. It's difficult to pull flops early. But from, from this graph, uh, what we can see is which are the outliers? And we can extract this within, let's say, you know, I, I just showed you within 24 hours. So which are our outliers? Why are uh, some of the flops, getting pre-poned or postponed so much, that's not good. Whether that is really required or not, that's, that's the view that we get much, much earlier. Also, you know, right here, now the, these, these could be, uh, these are some of the flops which are, uh, which are in, uh, which may be manually skewed. So, that, uh, so, so it, it shows up here. Uh, another important thing to see here is, these flat lines, these are actually buses that have been skewed the same amount, right? So we can get very good information on which are the critical buses that are getting skewed, and we can work with our RTL team to optimize the RTL better and produce a better RTL that is shipped out to you guys. All right, so what is our experience with the, the uh, Fusion Compiler technology? 
I, I'm happy to say that uh, we, we started working with Synopsys very, very early on uh, when there was no FC shell. It was, it was DC shell uh, and ICC2 shell, and they were trying to combine it, right? So very early on, we started working with them. But the tool is very stable, so, which is really good. I mean, the, it's very frustrating when the tool crashes, right? So uh, a lot. So tool, tool is very stable. That's, uh, I wanted to highlight that point. Again, uh, there are a lot of good things listed here. Uh, it's, uh, it's, um, uh, you know, it's pretty fast. I've already covered that. Uh, it's a better uh, design environment because everything is one uh, now. So I can, I can run the same script uh, in, in, uh, at a route stage that I can run in synthesis stage. Right? It will look and feel is the same. Uh, it's one tool, which is very good. It's the same uh, data model. It helps us a lot. Uh, uh, on that regard, there are some areas to improve also, and we are working with Synopsys on on, on these areas. So, uh, as as uh, uh, this this uh, collaboration has not ended, it is it is ongoing. So uh, we we are working with uh, Synopsys on some of these areas to improve. All right. Then uh, to summarize, Fusion Compiler enables us to produce a better RTL uh, in a much shorter time. Uh, and that is good for us, and it's good for you, because we, we give the RTL to you guys. So you get a much better quality RTL coming out of Fusion Compiler. We have seen Fusion Compiler giving us power and area benefit. Power and area benefit both are good, right? So better power means longer battery life, better area, the, the, the smaller geometry, the area is very critical. So. Uh, so that's good. So we get a reduced area, and at the end, you know, for uh, sorry, for uh, for for us and for you guys, for our customers, it gives a better uh, uh, experience uh, for 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 both 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 the sides, right? So that that's that's all good. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening to me. Uh, have a good day. <laughs>